So uh, I'm just going to, I guess, Walk. read this statement about the uh, pursuant to Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures <laughs> adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on July 16, 2022. This meeting of the West Boylston Planning Board is being conducted via remote participation. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by joining the Zoom link that was in the agenda posted uh, as appropriate. Okay. So I'm going to start uh, just for, I'm going to ask if there's any citizens here who just have citizens comments that were not on the agenda uh, that they would like to make before the board. I'll take that as a no. Um, and let's move on to Newha Circle. So, uh, Mr. Ali uh, did just I, I just saw in my email mention that he was not going to be here. Um, okay, so let's just review what we've got so far from between the last time that we met and where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. um, I understand from one of the residents, Jacqueline Leonardo, that he did send on the... Um, document for a, a document for the trustees to uh, be assigned or to take over and and, I, and a document for him to be resigning as trustee of the of the uh, homeowners association. We also sent to town council as we said we would do per the last meeting a couple of questions about um, remaining items and I can, sorry, just bring up this. Yes. So what we sent were the, the two documents that Mr. Ali provided to both the residents and the planning board for review. Um, we asked the question about whether the, if, if the uh, residents were to take over the homeowners association right now, would you be re immediately responsible for the drainage uh, and the cleaning of the uh, and the stormwater basin systems and all that, would you be immediately responsible for cleaning them? Because we know we have not, they have not been cleaned since 2019. Um, and we also asked about the terms of the most recent performance agreement having expired and what to do from there. So I think we might start by reviewing the responses from town council and potentially okay. go from there. So um, town council responded, they made a couple of changes to the appointment of trustees, minor things. Uh, what they also noted was that the homeowners have to have a new, uh, uh, the new trustees have to sign an acceptance of appointment. It's a no document. Um, because in order to make the transfer, there has to be recorded with the registry of deeds, the trustee resignation, the appointment of the trustees and the acceptance of appointment. So what's missing is the acceptance of appointment. Well, the problem is that the original had two members that are no longer going to be part of this HOA. So was it, so something, I, I'm, and I'm, Sorry, for everybody who is a guest here, please just state your name and your address for the record so that our minutes are accurate. I'm Vanessa, Six New House Circle. Very good. Okay, so go ahead, Vanessa. Yep. Um, all right, yeah, so in, originally we had voted this a couple of years back as a, a neighborhood who would be the top three people representing this. And two out of the three people are one and two New ha, which according to the design is not going to be included now. Mm -hmm. So we need to all meet again to, to, to appoint new members. Uh, right. New and, it, members. and it also, it sounds like nobody signed a, an acceptance of appointment. So nobody actually did anything is my understanding of that then. Like, like these are the legal documents that are required. So Correct. I don't think but you we have to worry never, about that. We've never been given any clarification are they supposed to be included are they not like we don't know and 
They are not. Who, they are. They well, are not currently included in the homeowners association as it was. But written. the thing is, is that they've paid into it. So why well, did that happen? And also, just sorry, real quick. Oh. A couple of the newer houses, like nine and ten, are not on it, and they're right in the circle. So it's it's. I think the whole thing needs to be re redrawn up, in my opinion. Okay. Well, I think the situation is is that anything that was in the subdivision becomes part of the homeowners association because one and two were create lots created with frontage on Pre, uh, Prescott street. They're not part of the subdivision. So they weren't originally included. As far as the planning board's interests are concerned, they could join the homeowners association. And that's one of the things two years ago, probably we asked um, Mr. Ali to provide legal uh, wording or however he's going to put it together to add them to the uh, homeowners association. We never saw anything. So until they're added in because they weren't part of the subdivision land, the, the deeded subdivision uh, that was split and divided up, they're not part of it. I think there's a way to put them in there, but I'm not an attorney. So we were right. trying to get someone with the legal background to be able to do that. Since then, I think um, Mr. Ali has not wanted to do it or not wanted to spend the money on an attorney to make that happen. So he's saying, okay, well, it's just uh, whatever it was, seven or eight lots that were originally in the subdivision uh, are going to be part of the homeowners association. And right. all of them but now should... that we have, now that we have more than that, um, I don't think any of us are ready to sign on until everybody, maybe excluding those two, one and two. Are also included because yep. they're right in the cul-de-sac as well so yep. no, everybody should be included there shouldn't be an option or a, their deed whatever those new lots are that you're referring to there should be a deed uh rider or something within their deed that says they're part of a homeowners association whether they paid the hundred dollars or five hundred dollars i'm not even sure what they charge that yeah and that's the thing really some matter. of us paid something so, some of us paid nothing so it's can i wait so these lots nine and ten were they not on the original Site nope. plan? Nope. Wait, they were added in... after. Lots were added after. This is because this one predates me, so I don't I don't have personal memory of this one. No, you said um, you said they're on the circle? Yes, they're on the circle. So How did they get added the... later? I don't know. They didn't. There was no, ones. I'm pretty sure they the were original all plans versus the ones that he finalized, he added two lots. Or maybe he divided the lots or whatever. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if the problem here is this is Tim Whitaker three new lot circle. I wonder if the, the issue here is that uh, maybe we're, we're saying lots nine and 10, when in reality those lots, because Ryan's, because one and two new lot were not included in the, in the original uh, plans. What we're saying, Vanessa, are lots nine and 10 because the houses nine and 10 are actually lots that are already accounted for within the eight that have been discussed here before. So I think that maybe, Maybe it's a semantics question. I, I think that there are, if I'm hearing it right, there are eight houses included in the original plan. And that would be accurate considering that one and two new are not accounted for. Yeah. yeah. But if that's the case, they're saying house numbers. Uh, I think it was like three through eight or something are supposed to be included in this HOA. Um, and again, we have houses numbers nine and 10. Can I just, this is Josiah Sandstone from two new homes. Can I just make a comment? So two things. One, Ali sent an email this week to several people uh, with a list of the people who had paid into the homeowners association, which included one and two new ha. Um, it's on our deed. It was on our closing agreement that we were part of the homeowners association, right? It was understood. And I think um, the one, if they were here, could comment on that. Um, and in the original uh, closing documents, I'd have to go back and find my original closing documents, there was a map of the subdivision, which included one and two, and did not include the two additional lots at the end of the circle, which were originally one large lot, uh, and it was split into three. Uh, so there was originally one single large lot, which I think was like five acres, which included the detention pond. And somehow later on that got split into three, but in the original uh, documents that we got when we bought the house, that was one lot. And so I think it was understood at that time that the eight lots that were in the HOA included one and two. 
and which is why we paid into the homeowners association um uh escrow at the account. rates at the rates that you did probably or maybe hopefully well we paid it was a single fee paid as part of the closing statement like mm -hmm. I think it was, I don't remember what it was, but I have to look at my closing documents. I don't know, I'd have to, I mean, I, I guess Sumo, your lots are pretty similarly sized. So you all own a similar interest in the- Yeah, they're all about an acre with the exception of the lot that has- there's association. Pond on it. Okay, so what we need okay. to do is we need to get uh, a list going for what we need from Mr. Ali. And we need well, a list of the lot numbers, of property owner numbers, property numbers, that are included in the homeowners association and a list of whether they what they paid and how I don't know they can't they couldn't have created a new lots without getting the planning board to sign off on an approval not required plan. So right. I was I worked at the DCR so I recused myself on this a couple of times. I don't know, Mark, do you remember any approval not required plans for this? property well the uh the first two uh, but the, i don't even know if they were approval not required or they were lots bought out of the the deal oh the ones in front on prescott yeah 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 no i'm thinking the, the ones that are numbers 9 10 11 or whatever the numbers no, are no i don't uh, i don't remember them breaking up after the anything was done i think it was the the plan we approved never changed you know George, do you have any input on that? Do you, are you aware of any of the changes? No, not at all. I didn't uh, come on board until the very last house at the end of the uh, end of the circle. So I was not around during that time. So I don't have any information on that. Okay. Well, there's got to be some kind of record of it. So yeah. I don't know. If yeah, maybe we may have to... something in my office. Uh, I can check and see if they have anything on file, but. As far as I'm concerned, I, I know nothing about any of the any of that uh, A and R. Hypothetically, if he never got approval, what happens? I don't I don't think we can answer that. He shouldn't have gotten time. approval. I mean, it it shouldn't have happened. So I. And are, are we saying that there's a lot that got split in the plan, or those front lots are not in the lots? subdivision up at the cul-de-sac? They're saying. The, yeah, they're saying there's additional lots there. Um, I can okay. find, I can find the original um, PDF document of with the plan of the subdivision on it and send it to the if you'd like, because that clearly had the lots marked out and the and the the single lot at the end of the cul-de-sac which I'm talking about which was split up later on and has three houses on it now uh, instead of a single house. <clears throat> I don't know how it, I don't know how it happened. I don't know if if I mean maybe the 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 plan that was given to buyers was different than what was sent to the town. I'm not really sure. I remember at the time, everyone, when they started building those additional two houses, uh, everyone was kind of like, what's going on? There's not supposed to be any more houses here. So, uh, but we were kind of in the dark about what was happening behind the scenes in terms of okay. if you approval for additional and lots or what. Can you, can you just, I might have missed it, but because I, I was trying to look for deeds, but could, could you just state who you are and what, and what your address is, please, for oh, record? Josiah Sansone, to the Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have a lot of unanswered questions on this. Uh, and there's clearly some issues with the way the HOA was set up that we can't actually answer here. I mean, part, part of the issue here is that while the town wants to help and get you all everything settled, this part is a little bit outside of our scope. Raj, you want to say something? Uh, I do have the copy of the planning board site plan, uh, definitive subdivision, and the stormwater uh, uh, management permit. You guys, thank you. Do you like this? Can you screen? share your screen? Do you want to share it here? Let me make. I uh, well, I, I don't know. If, yes, there you go. So let me make it a little bigger for the everyone. Oh, Raj, you're a faster searcher than I am. Yeah, so rather than oh. we are talking, you know. Uh, is that everyone can see this or you want me to make it a little bigger? Okay, here it is. Let me go. All right. Okay. So do we want to get to that plan? 
I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that the plan is going to be, it, it will be attached here. Uh, or is this just um, our decision? Mark is a chairman. He should know it. <laughs> chairman of what? The, that time. Yeah. Oh. Can, you I pull think, that, can you pull the plan back up, Raj? There is nothing is there. Uh, let me go. Well, it, would it, what, what was the date on that, Raj? Can I see? 2015? Uh, 2015. Is that, is that not on our website? Uh, no, it's 4 27 2015, not on our website. I did go to the deeds, the registry of deeds. And then from there, it's uh, I saw that applicants. Uh, I have a, uh, Sarah, I have an yep. email that's got a map in it, but it's a Kevin Duffy uh, report attached oh, to the markup plans with comments Mark, from the Mark. DPW, and it's got a plan that shows you know, the, the, our site plan. Okay. Yeah. Mark, can I stop? Yeah. Go. It says eight proposed lots. See this on the top? Yep, eight proposed lots. I think what we need to see is the plan that's associated with this filing. So and it's, it's only is eight. that I might this should be on our website. Should it should it no. not? No, we don't have plans on no. the website. Oh, okay. Just the decisions. All right. And I don't see any plans on the, of this in my file. I have the plan, the as built plan that you're referring to. It shows all the lots. Shows that shows one, two plus the rest, or or is there a nine and ten in there? It includes one and two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lots shown. Actually, if I can share my screen then. Yeah, let me get off. Go ahead. So, how come it is approved for uh, eight lots and then uh, they made it like a ten buildings? Well. I mean, I, I don't know, but just what I've heard so far is that the one and two was not originally part of the subdivision. So maybe, you know, what we're thinking of as one through eight are includes what these folks are thinking of as nine and 10, you know, so for them, it's like three through 10 and one and two were separate is my guess. But go ahead, Vinny. If you got something, you can. Um, I'm not being allowed to zoom. Allow Zoom to share your screen. Say yes. Uh, yeah, it's more than that. I got a, a bunch of different questions. Tell, tell me what the questions are. I'll tell you what to say. I just clicked on the yes, and it's moving through. Um, okay. There it is. Yeah. Then no. you just pick the. Pick the thing, it'll yeah. give you a look, you know, a bunch of things that you have on your screen. Yeah. Pick the thing you want to show. But it won't let me. It's I have to get through the security on my browser. On oh my... here. Hold on. Let me let me let me share. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Oops. Yep. Did, did that share? Yes. That's the item. Yep, you're good. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, zoom it in there a little bit, Mark, so we can see uh as I lean closer to my screen. Well, uh, I lost my Zoom picture. You were screen sharing. Let me see if yeah. I can find a Zooming ability. You just made it a little bigger. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of all these menus around the outside. Oh, I gotcha. Close, maybe. All right. Let's start full screen window. I think that's good. It gives us the idea that those lots at the end have houses on them. And that's what I remember as our approved subdivision plan. I don't remember the property at the end being all combined as one lot, but I don't, we need to find our approved subdivision plan. So, okay. and, and this one shows eight houses, not including the front two. Yes, a total of 10 houses on this. Yeah. Okay. So there's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight if you can see my cursor and then yeah. the two yeah. up front they're separate okay right. yeah but it it shows three lots in the front oh that lot one oh, over there number 217 correct lot one two three yeah but this well, could be a lot from uh uh prescott street yeah this is i see i street. see two lot 
one and twos, right? There's, there's one lot one and two, and then there's lot one and two. Can somebody show me what which lots are the ones we are? Well, there's this there's okay, lot one here, this one, and, and then lot and three. that one. And, and then what are lot the three and, over here? Okay. Correct. And these and these other lot ones and twos are some separate. Other yeah, items. right. Those are their their own lot on their own existing. project on the street. In fact, so they might be two existing and three people. at the very beginning of the street are the two that we are in question. You know, they paid for their HOA dues. They're gotcha. saying that they don't have to be included, but they can. We need clarification on what happens to those funds if they don't want to be in it, and what if they do want to be in it. So then that's something that we need the lawyers to talk about, right? Because Going back to what yeah. I actually put in the, the in the paperwork, he's accounting for eight because he's not including the two that Brennan John Prescott. So we do need a lawyer to get involved to draw up new HOA paperwork so that we can include the houses that are here listed as lots two and three. Uh, and and not and not some of the bit where we're not sure. Right. We're I, I'm not I'm not clear what our role as the town is in drawing up these right. HOA. I would assume that Ali would have to do that. And I would think so as well. I mean, us homeowners, we're not going to do that, so. No, this is what we need to ask Mr. Ali to clarify what lots are in the homeowners association. He just, he doesn't respond specifically Clearly. to these questions. So we need to say what lots so, are included in the homeowners association and the ones that are on Prescott, are they included? Are they not included? And if they paid a fee, do they get that feedback? Right. If they're not going to be included legally. Um, right. so, so why don't we move though? on? Why don't we move on in the response from town council? Um, so uh, and just to let everybody know, I, 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 they had a question about the third question, which I did respond to. And I asked a clar clarifying question about this second question that I'm about to go over uh, that we have not referred back yet from yet um but i asked about whether if you were to take over the hoa now you would be responsible um their response was it is the responsibility of the hoa until the town accepts the roadway as a public way the clarifying question i asked was what do you mean by that like i mean i think that the hoa is responsible as written up for the drainage and the stormwater basin maintenance. Um, I felt that that was, I was unclear as to whether they were saying that you were actually responsible for the road if you were to assign to to sign for this. So that is the clarifying question I had asked that did not come back yet. Uh, but that is what they are saying. So I, I would like to suggest that, I mean, this has gone on for years now and clearly we were supposed to form this HOA I think no longer than two years from the finish and it's gone way over that. So I would like to suggest, and anybody else can jump in too, but I think six months from the date that we all sign this, I think that before that there should be an inspection on his part to make sure that everything's up and running because we don't want to have any, any faulty drains when it's handed over to us. I think he right. should be in charge of that, that at a minimum of six months before. I think, I mean, I think that's fair. So I just want you to be aware of what town council, our town council responded to that question was that, yes, you would be responsible if you were to take it over right now. Um, we asked about the terms of the performance agreement and they said, they asked questions about what, if, if the work remains incomplete and what the funds were left in the bond. And so I responded with that. So we haven't heard back from that yet. So that's where we are with the town council response. Um, I, so board questions, thoughts, I have a specific question to ask, which is, um, what we say in the street acceptance guidelines specifically is that, that there's documentation that an HOA exists. So it is not clear to me whether it actually needs to be transferred to the residents before the street is accepted. Um, if it in fact already exists. So I am asking that question to you folks, if you have any knowledge or any precedence. 
Well, when we drafted that street acceptance plan um, or procedure, the idea was that you needed to have a homeowners association established so that the um, the utilities, mostly the, it's really the stormwater utilities that are outside the right of way of the roadway, were going to be maintained in the future. So that's it needed to be established. It didn't need to be assigned to certain properties, didn't need to be assigned to anyone in particular. It had to be established so that if there's a problem in the future moving forward, that the town would have someone or some group to say you, you are legally responsible for maintenance of this structure or system of structures and you need to do the maintenance. Um, okay. So that's what it was in there for. Okay. And okay. One additional is I think that they didn't ever switch over or, or at least the, you know, the original developer didn't back out until it was accepted just because if it's not accepted, they have more work to do, et cetera. You know, I don't, I don't think that. Usually it all kind of, I agree with you, Mark. That's, that's what happened. But typically the developer was trying to get everything completed before town meeting and oh, right. the planning board decides they're going to review it. And we think everything is completed, that everything's cleaned, everything's done. Then we go to town meeting and then usually it hasn't happened yet that a, our a proposal or a warrant article requesting acceptance acceptance of a town road under the subdivision regs has been turned down. It always has gone through because we do our homework and that's why we're in this situation now trying to get it ready before town meeting. Um, so everything should be cleaned and prepped before town meeting and then usually at the week of the week after the transfer of the homeowners association occurs shortly thereafter town meeting or shortly before uh, usually it's shortly thereafter and then there's a okay. usually the uh, developer will do a final sort of cleaning of all of the drainage structures now that's what we get that we get that before town meeting that everything has been clean and everything's done and it's ready for acceptance once we accept it as a town we own it okay but that's all, all the kind of stuff kind of happens close to that date, the, the meeting time. Yes. Go ahead, Raj. Thank you, Senator. It's a little bit, uh, I'm disappointed. So we are like 10 people are here, including the members and also the homeowners. So we could have not put it on the agenda. And uh, last minute not showing up is not the right thing to do. So maybe I, my suggestion is, you know, for the next meeting, if he is not showing up, we shouldn't be putting it on the discussion at all. He was excited. It's, uh, now it's, uh, you know, sure. let him deal with this, whatever the way he likes to deal with this. So I, I, I agree with you. I do. We just, we very didn't disappointing. know. We didn't know until just 20 minutes, oh, you know, the 20 minutes ago. You know, yeah. My and suggestion is, you know, before putting it on the agenda, maybe we should ask him, hey, are you going to be there? If he is not, I, I don't want to waste anybody's time. This is very, well, very disappointing. Not one meeting, not two meetings. I, you know, so I agree. You know, this go is ahead. not the thing to do. Vanessa, go ahead. Thanks. I appreciate that. And piggybacking off of that, you know, since it has been so long, what can um, the residents of Nuha do to override Ali and have the acceptance of the road go to town vote? You can always do a 10 taxpayer petition. You can submit it that way. The difficulty is, is that if, and I don't know what the actual engineering, I haven't been out to the site because I, like I said, I was, they recused from it, but the cracks in the road, uh, settling catch basins, uh, ponding areas, bad ADA compliance. If it doesn't meet all that and you, the uh, 10 taxpayer petition says we want to accept the road, we're still as a planning board, as the DPW and as the town administrator, I assume, yeah. we'll review it based on that and make a recommendation to town meeting. And if it doesn't 
meet the standard of the town, we would recommend uh, denying or uh, rejecting the acceptance. So it can be put at any time by 10 taxpayers, but it needs to be ready for that is the problem. And that's what we're trying to get him to do is, I mean, if he doesn't, if he doesn't paint the lines correctly, if he doesn't clean the catch basins, I'm not so worried about that. The big costs that I'm not sure of are fixing the cracks and getting ADA compliance for the sidewalk. I mean, that's something that should have been done as part of the construction and should have been done as part of before building permits were issued, before occupancy permits were issued. All that stuff was supposed to be done and checked by our ADA person. Our ADA person is George, I think. And so it's, and whoever was before him, he didn't do this, but the building inspector was the ADA guy. So it should have all been checked and confirmed. And that's what needs to be done because then the town is going to be, um, next time we do an, an ADA compliance app report, if it says these roads are not in compliance, you know what the response is going to be from whatever agency it is. It's okay, the town needs to fix that. Um, okay. And then, okay, so going from there, what can we do as the town, um, as the street residents to have the bond completely passed over to the town so that the town can take care of that? So I think that's a good could, question. Go ahead, Raj. Yeah, I could add, you know, so the bond amount may not be sufficient to fix that road. You know, we can always uh, go after the bond. So the question is, you know, is that bond is enough? So the, you may ask a question, you know, how can we reduce the bond? We did reduce the planning board, we did reduce the bond based on the recommendation from the town engineers that time, you know, whatever the remaining works was there that time. These are all the, some of the things came up after afterwards. So, okay. but, you know, so- And that was, that was 2019, I think also. I mean, it was, it was some years ago. So unfortunately, do you yeah, know what the remaining some... balance is? And I did hear that other towns have been able to take bonds from other projects within the town from the same developer. Is that possible here as well? I don't think so. We can. I don't. I don't. I don't know the answer to that question. I. I think that this. I mean, there's a bond for this project. There's a bond for his other projects. Um, there's only a and... bond for Westland Circle. It right. Else. Oh, that's right. You're right. You're right. That's right. That's right. There's only the other. Again, and no, no, even Westland Circle, there are uh, unfinished business over there. Mm -hmm. There is a there is quite a bit of bond. unfinished business over there. Yeah, we, if we switch the bond to Nova, just hypothetically, so what are we going to do with the uh, Westland Circle? So how they those residents are going to react? You right. Know? Right. No, we haven't we haven't done it. It's just an idea that Vanessa right. was right. proposing, and right. that's something we should probably check with town council. Is yeah. Some way of. I using it i think probably the first step uh is to find out is maybe to have bhb or somebody that like somebody needs to give us a cost estimate on what it's going to take to finish the rest of it would probably be helpful for us to uh, to to know um then we i mean we're, we're we're guessing that the amount of the bond is not enough to cover it but we don't know that for sure so I think that was probably our, our next best step. And I guess, um, would we have VHB do that? Do you remember the bond amount uh, on top of here? It is $46,100. It's, it's going nowhere. Right. So maybe we ask, uh, before we go into the bond thing, we probably should uh, check with VHB and ask them what they propose as plan to follow on this. I mean, that I don't want to, if we start talking about exec, uh, executing the bond, um, it's not good for his uh, credit rating, Mr. Ali's, but that's not our problem. We've been trying to get this for years. So uh, I just don't want to be stuck with not enough money and no way to make it work. So, I, so it sounds like we, we want to get the, I, I think we need to get the amount first so we know what we're working with. And then we could talk to town council about whether or not it is possible to um, use monies from another bonded project that he has, which we did not choose to reduce when he requested. Josiah, you have a, your hand up. 
Yeah, so back to Vanessa's question, uh, kind of. Um, unfortunately, this whole situation seems to leave uh, us as the residents in a bit of a difficulty um, through, I mean, from what I would say, no fault of ours. Um, we're kind of between a rock and a hard place because right now um, the town is not going to take care of the drainage. We don't have access to any of the escrow to take care of the drainage. Um, we're dependent on him to plow our road and pay for the lights. And I know that he has threatened several times to walk away, um, in which case we would be left essentially holding the bag. As far as I can see, and from what I think was just said, the responsibility for ensuring that he did things correctly fell upon the town and its inspectors. So the onus is on the town as the holders of the bond to ensure that things were built properly. Um, and the fact that the bond was reduced to an amount that might not be sufficient to complete the remaining work is kind of the town's fault. So um, I, I think I think that there, there there's more to it. I, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I think it's a little, there's a little more to it than that in that at the time that this was reviewed and the bond was reduced, what was remaining was very little. The cracks in the road weren't there because that was three years ago. The ADA and so wasn't done, though. that was still. That I, 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 I hear what you're saying about the ADA compliance and I, I, um, we have different people here now who have Understand different we can't ways of looking things, um, but though, uh, but I, I I just want I just want to say that the I mean at the time there was not as much to be done um, because because it was three years ago and so more things have surfaced since then. Right, and actually, it's the whole thing is is also if you ended up sorry, Raj, um, just the idea of construction costs three years ago before COVID, you look at a sheet of plywood. It's gone up multiple times in cost. That's the situation I expect. 46,000 might have been fine back then to do whatever is needed, but the construction costs just skyrocketed. And that's something we need to find out what the real truth is. What is the current construction cost as opposed to what everyone thinks? Correct. So, so the question goes back to if, if, if it's not sufficient, what happens? Does, does do the residents have to take Ali, Mr. Ali, uh, to legal action against him? To because essentially, I'm I'm thinking about this in the sense of the town can't accept it, right? We're in a catch twenty two situation, right? The town can't accept it until everything is done. Otherwise, the town would be liable, and the town may not have money to pay for all the work that needs to be done. It doesn't sound like he's going to do it. We don't have sufficient money in the bond to actually complete the work. So we're in a situation where he may simply leave and the town won't accept the road and we're stuck with it. So do we then have to take legal action against the uh, in order to remedy that so we can get the town to accept the road? Because it sounds like to me like that's the next logical option. That I think is an option in the future. I think that's what's going to happen. We don't know, like we keep saying, we assume that the number is not big enough. We assume that we don't have enough money and we need to get the legal aspects of what can be done and what, what needs to get done. So I think I plan on talking to town council at town meeting on Monday night and just kind of give her the background of all this. And instead of doing it in emails where it's more succinct, just kind of going back and forth. Um, so there's more to it than just black and white that you're kind of cutting to. We need to do a little more work on it. On our end, again, it's the town. So let's get a number, Go ahead, Vanessa. Um, so, I mean, there really hasn't been any real urgency that I could see in the past for this. I mean, other than letting Ali get all of this stuff in, in line before we do anything, you know, why should we do anything for him? Now the problem is becoming um, two things, the paving, we're relying on him to pave our roads in the winter. Um, and the second thing is the bus. They won't allow the buses to come down the street while it's a private street. And now all of us have kids of school age and it's just not safe to be putting them on Prescott. All these, there's like 15 kids. So we do have an urgency to get this completed before the next school year. Yeah. So, uh, I'm 
like I said, so the action items here, I, I'm going to, I'm going to try to bring this part of the conversation to a close. Mr. Ali's not here and, and there's not a whole lot we can do much further here. We're going to ask VHB to give us a number for how much it's going to cost to complete the work on the punch list. Um, we will also ask town council about what our options might be regarding his other bond that he has in town, which was not reduced, but knowing that there's significant issues over there as well. Um, and we'll and we'll come back with that. I mean, one of the unfortunate things is really that we have two town meetings a year. So you got one, you know, you got two shots at it every year. Um, and and so let's let's, you know, we know October is gone. Let's hope for May to get this resolved and 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 be moved off. Um, but I think those are our action items from here. Great. We also want to talk to Mr. Ali or email Mr. Ali and ask him to clarify the issues surrounding the homeowners association. He keeps saying it's set, it's established, everything's okay, but who's in it specifically and how much has each of them paid is what I want to see. Right. And then if there's more money in the pot than the eight people that were listed as being in it, then we ask that question. And I assume that he's probably going to watch this video. So hopefully he'll get the idea of what the questions are coming at him. That sounds great. Uh, if, I remember I've... Correctly, if I remember correctly, last meeting, you know, we did ask the homeowners association, copy of the homeowners association for the board. Did we get anything? I, I didn't see any emails on that. Yeah, we got that, didn't we, sir? We got the what he wants to write as his resignation, and we got the uh, what they would do as the appointment, but not the acceptance of appointment, which they need. Um, in addition to be able to file it with the Registry of Deeds, the actual homeowners association filing, I think must already, I mean, I think, I believe that those have to be in the Registry of Deeds to exist. So that should be a matter of public record because what they'd be doing in the transfer would then be a matter of public record. Uh, I don't have my fingertips on that right now, but that, that should be available to anybody. I don't see any of those things in that, uh, you know. In the deed under new circles, nothing is there. At least the way I'm looking at. Okay, Mark. I have a couple of questions about sort of the urgent uh, issues. Um, are there is the is the pavement like are there raised structures in the pavement like so it can't be plowed this winter? I think she meant plowing, not paving. Mark, uh, yeah, plowing. Oh, that's all. Oh, okay. Just so we have to rely plowed. on him to plow. And I mean, thankfully, we haven't had an issue yet. Okay. If we get him angry, we might have an issue. Well, and, and okay. And I mean, we, we could try to advocate for the, the neighborhood to whoever runs the bus system and ask them to you we know, put on the road. All, I think that already have, happened. Several of us have reached out, and the consensus is until it's not uh, accepted by the town, they can't go onto our street. Liability. Okay. On private street. Are they yeah, I, damaging, damaging the street or getting damaged think, and not having somebody to help them? I think it's the, the bus company in their contract, but that is a whole separate issue. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. I don't want to get into that here. Uh, we have one question from resident. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is Nick. I'm from Nine Nua. Um, so just a question on, you said you were going to go to the VHB for an estimate on what the um, improvements would, would cost. Um, my driveway is one of the, I guess, non-ADA driveways where the sidewalk um, is too low coming into the driveway section. And the proposed um, fix just doesn't seem right to me. I mean, it, they're going to cut my driveway in half and and leave a massive crack. Um, you know what was a clean you know driveway when I when I purchased the house. Um, so you know I, I don't know what uh, recourse I have to go and say you know if you're going to rip up half the driveway, then I want the whole thing done. You know, and I, I'm I'm thinking that's maybe the situation for at least three or four other driveways. Um, so when we're talking about costs, I, I just, you know, I, I don't know where to go with that, but I just don't think the proposed solution is adequate. 
I hear what you're saying, but I don't, I don't have an answer for that as far well, as the, the, the issue I really think. is construction standards are that you do a saw cut and you can seal it and that crack, it will be a visible crack across it. And that's about all. And so the standard of construction is to just cut it and then start the grade over. So there should be no structural problems with your driveway. And that's, you gotta, we've got a, uh, a paving company doing it with their liability insurance so that when the contract actually happens, they need to comply with the standards that are in place and it should get done correctly. So there should be no problem. Right. I mean, I, I had, we had new sidewalks put on my street and they absolutely had to do that same saw cut on, on our driveway. And yeah, I mean, a couple I, of years I, ago, I mean, it's the pavement, you know, is cracking that they put in after a year of being redone. So I guess I just don't have a lot of faith in that, you know, the way the sidewalk is going to be done is going to be sufficient. That's just, sure. you know. That's understandable. And I think we're not going as, uh, I think it was either uh, Jacqueline or Vanessa said at one of our previous meetings, we don't want the same paving contractor out there. So we want someone who's going to accept responsibility and do the job right. And I believe Ali had agreed that Yes. he would run it by you guys first right yes he's gonna run it by you guys or he's gonna run it by the people's driveways which one are you saying he it? just just saying that confirming that it's a different pavement company uh, gotcha gotcha okay okay i'm gonna move on from this matter but thank you all for attending i really appreciate it and hopefully we'll get some movement uh as we move forward here, but we'll we'll take Mark. You're on mute. Mute, Mark. Do we think that Ali is going to be at the next meeting? I don't know. We'll we'll ask ahead of time. I mean, either way, we have some homework to do as far as getting those estimates, and and VHB has you know been asking on average for a month uh, monthly time anyway. So, okay. I I would expect that we. I mean, we may we may have them for next meeting. We may not. Maybe this will be tabled until December. Okay, let's let's move on in the agenda. Let me go back to it. Um, since Mr. Ali is not here, uh, do we have anybody here for Westland Circle? Okay, so I think we'll just move on from Westland Circle. I mean, uh, there's significant issues there too, but since he's not here, there's no updates to be made. Okay, let's talk about, uh, actually, why don't, if you, if, let's see, who do I have here? Um, why don't we move on? Gabriella, I see that you are here and you are here for number two in our new business of the 215 West Boylston Street informal discussion. So why don't we move to that? first um and then we'll circle back to the to the other pieces okay so do you have something you'd like to present for us i do um i'm not really sure what i'm supposed to be presenting except for um that there are two established businesses at 215 west Boston street and i'm petitioning or hoping to be the third one um, my business actually aligned perfectly with the ex with one of the existing businesses, which is like a, a gym slash wellness wellness place. Um, I will be doing um, IV hydration. Just a little bit about me. I am a nurse. I'm an emergency trauma nurse, and um, I am trying to start this and hoping. I actually have it up and running. I mainly do mobile. Um, so I'll go to people's homes and offices or whatever it is and deliver these uh, medications or vitamins and nutritions that they need. Okay. And so you're just looking to establish a brick and mortar spot to be yeah. doing this permanently. Yes. And I actually used to attend um, Stephanie's gym, which was on Lee Street. And when I told her I was doing this, she was so excited. She was like, Gabby, this is perfect for us. And I was like, yes, I didn't want to ask. <laughs> And yeah. Okay. All right. Quite questions from the board or thoughts? Mark. Do, do we know what the current um, disposition of their property is as far as if it is a, what do we call it, a business center? Is that what they're called when they have? 
what I decided. Well, actually, George, you did a zoning interpretation on this, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, uh, they came to me and asked me about opening up that business. And because it turned into a three businesses in one building, it, it fit into our bylaw that states it has to have an approval uh, for as a business center. So I couldn't do anything at my level. So it had to be kicked out to, uh, to you in order to approve a business center. And, but that's and so, basically so all I knew so about it this time. So previously there were only two businesses or yes. there were three businesses. It just wasn't approved. No, there, was two, there were two in the building only. Gotcha. Okay. So this would be an additional, uh, this would make it the third. I see. Um, and we, we didn't get all the way to business center when they, when the, the bread company or whatever, the single business left and they started putting in multiple businesses. I, I'm not familiar with that. Obviously I wasn't here at the time. But uh, from what I understand, there's yeah. a auto repair mm -hmm. shop in the back portion of the of the uh, building now, and uh, the um, total refit, which used to be on Lee Street, uh, is now in that building. That made two, and and that using the entire building uh, for those two businesses. They have a, a section of the building when you're that's facing the street to the right hand side that is open uh for another business okay so i understand that uh gabriella is coming in which is great why is the owner not the one uh coming in because they have they own the property they have the uh, authority to get a survey done i don't really see any big issues with the, getting the work done or getting the site plan review approval but having one of the tenants come in uh, and have to kind of be harnessed with that whole project just seems unfair. Uh, is that is it something that we can contact the building owner to? So to at, do, or actually, that? Stephanie wanted to be on this meeting, but I wasn't sure if she could be on there. So I told her, I don't know, I would just attend and get back to her. Okay. Um, but right. she was very decided to join and I actually, I mean, I could share my screen. I can try to share my screen, but I did get, like you asked, I don't know if you can see, I did get oh, yeah. this. Like plan. Yeah. yeah, so there's plenty of parking and majority of my customers will, will already be there. They're um, Stephanie's customers. And, and Steph is, she, is she the owner of the building? No. She oh, is okay. not. The owner, I see what you're saying. She, I think she is um, leasing from the owner and she okay. does have authorization to sub lease because it's a 1500 square feet extra space, which Ooh. she's not using at all. I think when the intent is made for her to uh, rent this portion of that building at that point, uh, then the owner of the, uh, the entire building can then petition for that third business in there as of right now there's there's nothing it's just that gym and those only those two businesses so once she establishes that yes i want to be there then at that point i think that we can uh instruct the owner of the building that he has to come in and open up for three businesses yeah. that's my understanding well, that's and then my understanding. and then and then and then gabriella would rent directly from him Correct. rather than Got yeah. it. Rather than than just basically paying some money to be in a space. Right. Yeah. Well, it doesn't really matter to us whether it's three businesses that are one or two are sublet from another. If there are three businesses, then it's a business center. Yeah. But the process that would need to be followed, Gabriella, would be in it's in the zoning bylaws and it's pretty involved because it's made for like if a McDonald's comes in or a big company comes in. So we want to make sure we get all our bases covered. Um, for this kind of a small change, it's not, a lot of the things are not needed. You've already got paving out there, you've uh, got enough, or you got a lot of parking spaces. What you'd have to do is calculate how many parking spaces are needed from the other build, other uses, and then the well, Wait, 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 yours. hang on, Benny. Does she have to do it or the business, no. the owner, the, business. the owner, when we the get, building so, owner? Yeah, whenever we get the site plan review application, they're gonna have to submit a site plan review application 
and submit all the things that are required in there or ask for waivers from some of those things that don't seem to really be needed. And once they get kind of a basic plan, they can come in to us with the preliminary and we can look at it and say, oh yeah, you need a little of this. You need, you don't need to do a traffic study. You don't need to do uh, an architectural rendering of the rendering of the building because it's already going to be there. Um, so we can waive or uh, suggest things that they request for waivers. Um, we probably wouldn't need an engineering review, which is more costly. Um, but it's one of those things where we don't know until we see what what gets submitted. Mark. Um, we should also, I mean, one thing that would be important is the uses of each spot to calculate the parking from. So, I mean, like before it was a retail store, which was probably um, a pretty high use, not as high as like a restaurant. But if it's going down to, you know, a, a, a one, you know, a much lighter use as far as parking, I mean, that all that should be established so that we can say, yeah, in fact, you have enough parking and try, you know, the, the, um, traffic study is, is is valid to be waived because the traffic is going down. I mean, those are the kind of little uh, new things that have to be discovered because it's it, they're new businesses. Can I, I have a question. Is, is it possible for uh, the, what, what is it, the um, um, Stephanie's business to offer what you're offering as a service in her it's business? A separate business. It, I, I, I don't know how she would do it. I can ask. I can try to. I, it's okay. I'm just, I'm just asking as a that, like. I know because that would save a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where. That's where I'm going with that. Uh, yeah. Um, I appreciate that. I will. I will look. I will definitely um look and see if if that's even a possibility. Right. Right. And. I don't know. I think we, we've got a couple of projects that are coming in on route, uh, route 12 and we have to be consistent as a board to be applying the rules and have reasons. If we're change, if we're changing the standards, there's gotta be a reason for us to change the standard. And I see that there are good reasons for this. Uh, whereas if they're going to put a new Dunkin Donuts in, um, right. to this site, we definitely want to see more information. That's what, we had a proposal for a Dunkin' Donuts down by CVS, and they needed to do the full drainage and traffic and all the other things, which really warranted it. But there was a retail shop there. I'm not sure what's going on with the automotive in the back or what the number of uh, people are coming in for the, uh, the fitness place, but you just have to look at those uses, like Mark said. Uh, we have in our, re in our regulations the parking requirements. So just uh, compile a table of each of those items and add it all up and see if you have that many spaces. Mark? Um, I, was, I was also going to say, I don't think we're deviating from any of our standards because we've done sort of a, a lighter um, site plan review, this type of thing for, um, I think when Pinecroft was was trying to do their thing, well, that, that, that place with Pinecroft and the pool store and everything when they had to get their site plan review so they could be a business center. But we did a similar thing to this where we, you know, it was a sort of a lighter level than the, the heavy duty ones when like Dunkin' Donuts and there's a serious traffic study involved or something like that. I mean, when it's really, you know, sort of easy answers, I think we can, we, we're not changing our standards. We're just realizing what the, the reality of the situation is. Yes, no, and I agree. I think it's all what we're doing and we're not, we're not squeezing or adjusting anything, but we just need yeah. to have the information there. Cause I think Quinn engineering did that work on, um, on Pinecroft and they yeah. just, they did a, uh, an existing condition survey and counted the parking spaces and came through with the whole plan. Um, right. I think the most important thing is that they, they did their uses so that they, it was not a negotiable thing. You no, know, this is the business. This is how many spaces they need, you know, and, and that made it an easy project. Oh, sorry. I think, you know, we can talk all night long, but the thing is, you know, the owner of the building has oh, yeah. to come before the board. He need to apply to the town and he need to say, hey, 
I want a free business here. The owner may say, you know, I don't need it because two business is more than enough. I'm getting the rent. So I'm not going to go, go through all the pain to get another business. He could very well say that. So until we get an application from the owner of the building, so we have nothing to go about it. That's my feeling. Yeah. Uh, well, I do. I do also want to bring up the, the the owner of the building would also probably have his old permit information and documentation and perhaps the engineering firm, and that might even make this easier if they've got the drawings, they've got the parking layout, they've got the square footage. I mean, the, then a lot of the work is already done. Mark, if you can get them to get their work back, you know, their their Mark, contract the back. I am saying it. You know, now the owner from the autom automotive bis uh, repair place, as well as the gym, is getting the rent. So and, this is and, going to be a sublet. So that means, you know, they are getting getting some space from the other business. So then, you know, so he, he, can may, raise not his rent. he may not have any interest. Is, okay. And is this part I, of Cranston's too? The the, no. the auto behind, is, is that a separate no, law, no. separate piece of property? Okay. No. All right. So I think I mean the owner has to come and present the the business center is the the main answer, Gabriella. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you know Stephanie and her existing business can hire you on as a service that she offers is part of her business. I'm not sure if that's a acceptable or not, but um, um, I'm thinking of like you know hair salons that have people who do eyebrow services, right, that are separate. Um, but As I mean, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a person that does it and that's the only thing that they do and that's their specialty. Um, that's so, I don't know. what I do at a salon here too. Um, I go there two days a week and I actually do that. Um, so, so I think the way to answer that question is, um, Gabriela, would you have your own sign on the outside of the building that advertises your business? I, I thought I was going to. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, that, sort of, that makes it a third business or not a third business. Right. Okay. You know? So if, if, if it's not needed, then I will speak with Steph. Perhaps she can hire me as a consultant. I don't, I don't know if that's even... get a, it started. You can see how it works before you go through the trouble of the permit. True. Trying to get the... Yeah. True. Um, I, I, I did want to mention that Stephanie starts her gym at like 5.30 in the morning. I know I used to go. And um, <laughs> at nine, by 9.30, like, it's like mainly vacant. And then I think she has like one or two other places. So, I mean, I will not be hydrating anyone at 5, 6, or even 7 a.m. Um, I will most likely be starting at like 10. And majority of my clients will already be her existing client. Just wanted to throw that. Uh, sure. I don't, I don't think that between you two, I, I think it would be a very similar situation to what was there before with the hobby store, and except for the five thirty part. Um, so I, I, I'm still thinking that the the travel uh, or the traffic study is still waivable. You know? Thank you. Okay. 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 All right. Well, I hope that was helpful, Gabriella. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Hi, you're welcome. Okay. Team, let's move back to number one, which was the 241 Prospect Street update of the ZBA court decision. Um, so if you had a chance to read it over in the materials that Melanie sent out. Um, so uh, the situation, this is the, um, wait, what is it? Wait, hold on. Four, four unit condos. Yeah, that's the four unit. Sorry, it's the part where it's like, oh, is that really Prospect Street still right there? Because it's kind of right there on Woodland, but that that was what that's the old triangle, happened. right? Yes. George is here. He knows very well. We were at the this this was ZBA denied. And right. then well, so just just to catch just to catch people up. Uh, yes, the um, ZBA denied the petition. For him to have four units? No. no. Or have it at all in that lot? It's in a single family as well as a business zone. So the applicant came in 
and he wanted to put the building in the uh, business zone and within bringing the building inside the single family zone right so when he want he wanted four buildings so and then you know he can have he has to have that 30 feet of the thing uh, setback or whatever the thing he so, gets he gets to count 30 feet so the ZBA into the single residence zone as part of the calculation for the, the number building. of units he's allowed to have ZBA right looked at it. zba looked at it he cannot put any of this physical building within the single family zone so sure that, uh that based on that uh the zba denied it and then in um, the land court sided with the zba whereas it was appealed to the uh, appeals court the appeals court said different so the appeals court allowed it. So let me, uh, you know, George is here. So George could uh, speak a little more elaborate on that. So I actually, I want to try to, I want to try to um, keep this to the our purview, which is to say that what what has come back is that so what the ZBA decided and the lower land court decided was fine was overturned by this higher court and it was sent to us with the idea that that maybe there are some changes in our bylaws that we could tighten up to make sure that this doesn't happen again so that's what i want to focus our discussion on is uh what exactly allowed them to say it was okay and what might we tighten up to make it not okay in the future if it's not what we want as a town. Yeah, do you want so, to yeah I, can, I, can, I can explain that. Uh, when, when the plan was brought to me originally, um, I had told the builder that uh, the, he couldn't put four units in there, they wouldn't fit. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it was uh, part of the building was in that 30 foot buffer zone. And that is referred to uh, when, when you read when you read the uh, the bylaws. Uh, it says that you can uh, go into that area as long as it's not active. And it was my interpretation uh, of the of the drawings showing that a large portion of of one of the apartments on the uh, or condo on the end, a, a big chunk of it was in that area in that 30 foot buffer. And to me, that's active. Mm -hmm. So if it's active, then they shouldn't be able to build in there. Uh, but the higher courts uh, decided against that and saying that they could use that actively uh, because for whatever reason they came up with, I don't understand how they came to that conclusion, but they did. So basically they have a active uh, part of that building in a single residence district, which in my feeling is that should not have happened. Sure. So anybody uh, have any comments on what they think might what language be a proposed you know, be a proposed change to the bylaws that would that would make that clearer? I think that should be identified what that space can be used for. So uh, that the we, the the lower are the more restrictive zone, whatever is allowed in the more restrictive zone to be calculated towards the area requirements. That's it, just for the area, not not, not be allowed to be used, at, be for active use. Correct. Okay. And we just don't, is it that we just don't like say that out loud? Well, it's, an, it's ambiguous. We don't really, it it's doesn't ambiguous. say anything. It's just okay. it's 30 feet and, you know, there you go. Have you can, it's like it doesn't say you can or you probably, can't. So he's saying they were saying, the boundaries yeah, here, the boundaries here, but nah, go ahead. You can have 30 feet more. There's no problem. That's well, not for nothing. Means. Not for nothing looking at the way that building's going right now. I don't know how anybody's gonna pull into their into their garages, but that's that's it. That's your that's your domain, George. Well, I guess is there a reason why we wouldn't just cut out that 30 foot and just delete that? Oh, and I would. So I would. Vinny, that'd be a good way of doing it. 
either either cut it out completely or specify what actually can go in that 30 feet like a structure or something not no, structure. no structures that's active uh that's exactly something, so no structures uh, no, yeah. no so, be, I, so you're thinking like so if that was like the lawn for a the lawn, buildings a, a little sandbox for the kids swing sets right uh i mean i know that's active no we'll talk about active being a uh, you know brick and mortar type of active versus right. a play yard a trees bushes uh maybe even a dumpster right know? but not not to actually build in it i just think that that's wrong so I think um, I think when we consider bylaw changes, the questions are always, uh, you know, what good will it do and what harm will it do? Um, so I think a, as we think about this, that's that's what we should consider when we're considering a change. You know, if we were to say, you know, follow Vinny said, like cut out that you don't even get to use the thirty foot as part of your calculation what's good what's harmful there like where does that where does that pinch us where does it uh where does it benefit us and the same thing or you know okay I, this is where i feel like um it's yeah, i don't know i mean it's hard to say right it's hard to say i i really think it's it's about the, when you're making policy you know you're trying to hit that sweet spot where you get the right thing and you're still able to do stuff, you know, you want, you want to be able to do stuff that, that is good for the town or good for whatever organization you're working for or whatever. Um, but you want to keep out the, the, the bad stuff. And that's, it's a hard, it's a hard it, line, it true. line to walk. If, if sure. you allow, if you allow this to be, you know, it, well, it's been allowed to build in that area. Uh, there's several other places in town that would be very happy to have that extra 30 feet to build on. Sure. And, I, and I think that some builders would take advantage of that. Yep. Yep. We've got to determine whether you want that to happen. If you want it to happen, leave it as it is. If you don't want them to build in that, then obviously you have to change something in the bylaw. Yeah. I mean, I think it's better. It, I, 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 I just want to say that I recommend clarifying one way or the other, because um, if you just leave it vague, then you never know what you're going to get and you don't have anything to say about it later on. Right. Go ahead, Vinny. Well, I guess what's the benefit of having the 30 foot extra? What, what do we lose or what complaints are we going to face at town meeting? If we say, well, we just want to, we had this problem. Look at the site across from Pinecroft. This is why it happened because we had this thing. Let's delete it. What are we yep. going to face is, Questions or issues, George? Uh, be honest with you, uh, I have thought, I have heard nothing uh, from any other uh, situations like this. Uh, this is just, I just think that it, it could open up a can of worms down the road. And uh, I know, I'm not positive of this, but I think that if, uh, for instance, the Dunkin' Donuts, they, they, they was, that was bordering a single residence district in itself. And that was denied, but they could have gone back 30 feet behind them and made that area even bigger. Right. And that's what right. that's what I think that the board would be uh, wanting to avoid is a lot. It's like giving them 30 feet extra. You know, they can make a 30 foot building, uh, well, a bigger building and fit it. When you the when you say that, George, though, do you mean um, like cut out the 30 feet? as allowed towards the calculation of what they're able to put in a place or just say it can only be a passive, like okay. it, like specifically say it must be a passive use. It cannot okay. be an active okay. use. There's case, the case studies out there now, uh, there's many, many different cases where the, um, the single residence and the business district, uh, they uh, both can be used to figure out the area of the lot. That's why with, with that one acre, uh, they could build, they could use the whole acre to calculate how many units they could put in. That's, that's fine. I mean, that's no, I don't have any objection to that. What I am I'm afraid of is that, that just picture that building as it is now. Right now, there's a small triangle, <coughs> excuse me, in the back portion of one of the units. They could have basically built the whole thing in there. 
right I've gone right back right up to the right up to the uh the zoning line right based upon what the court decided so if that's what you want them to be able to do then leave it as it is but if you don't want them to be active in that area because it's single residence i mean it's very clear you you know more restrictive versus what least restrictive so you're taking a more rest uh uh least restrictive use and putting it into a more restrictive area you know and i think that that can open up a real can of worms throughout the town because we do have sure. a few other lots in town that have the split zone yes so where is the where's the reference do you have that handy I, the, what section I, I it is and I don't what have, wording do I, we want to have changed yeah i don't have that uh Vinny, in front of me Okay. Um, I can get that to you tomorrow when I get back to the office. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly which bylaw that 30 foot is, you know, which number it is off the top of my head, but I can get you get you that. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, because I just want to look. I was gonna I'm just going online to look to see what it is to find out whether there's ways to change it. But I think I think we all are in agreement that we need to do something about it. So mm -hmm. maybe we put this on the agenda for uh, our next meeting for zoning changes. And maybe George, if you can make a list of all the different zoning changes you'd like. Dave, I, I have a list. This is near and dear to your heart. Maybe yeah. put a couple together yourself and we'll see about yeah. the edits to the zoning at, our, at the spring meeting. I okay. think That's, having some proposed that. wording would be awesome. Um, as would uh, with those proposed changes, maybe getting some feedback from other boards ahead of time so that we can have a real productive and the, and the wording, I think, uh, discussion would be great. So we can put down some wording, but of course, town council would have to look at that, at the wording, yep. and make sure that we're not, you know, that we're doing the right thing. But I'm in, I'm in favor. I, I, I think that that should not be either taken out or defined. Of what yep. can actually go in that area? Okay, so what what I would like to see brought to the next meeting then is an actual like document with strike throughs and or you know new drafted language that we could look at. Um, and well, I could put it rec together. Recommend recommend to be moved forward uh, in whatever the I might, like. Is it can I can anybody advise me on the exact? I mean, I know that a bylaw change would have to go to town meeting. Where what are the other procedures well, I that think happen? What, I think what we want to do first is get what George is looking for on this legal aspect. Look for other things that might be needed, and then once we get that, what we've done in the past was send it off to the ZBA, um, yep. the Select Board, the Economic Development. Send it off to everybody and say this is what we're considering. We're thinking about it for the Springtown meeting. Do you have concerns? Are there comments in the past and we're going to talk about it at our next meeting. Please submit comments. We did that okay. two years ago, and we got zero comments back. Um, and then we got some later from Dave, but we got no comments back on the last time we did that. Um, so let's see what happens this time. Yep. So that so that's what I would like to see happen. So how uh, so George, you're going to send us redlined additions. Yeah, I, I will. Stuff I will for look, next meeting. I will look up that by law and I'll strike out I'll, I'll make two proposals if, if that's all right uh, that's one great of them would be eliminating it and the other one would be putting in some uses yeah that may, what that i would find what you can put in that area what i would like to do um so <laughs> i i would love to get everything on your wish list all at once but i think that prioritizing them and getting through boards uh at you know smaller amounts is probably going to be faster right so um so I so I I think that's a great idea for you to give the two proposed pieces, and we'll work on this one. And but Vinny, I hear you on all the other ones. I know that George had some before. Um, you know, maybe if we chunk this out a little bit, and you know, George, you can get us something sooner than later that that I could go ahead and or Melanie could. You know, I mean, usually Toby sends around stuff from the ZBA asking us for comment, right? If we could do a similar thing, maybe Melanie can do a similar thing for us. To the boards mm -hmm. for comments um you know for the next meeting and then we move on with that and if that's great and and so then if we say yes we want to recommend this then it we just have to put it forward for the next town warrant is that how that works yeah. we have to have our meetings and everything 
We have to have public hearings. Public hearings yeah. and stuff like that. We have to have public hearings to go with the bylaw changes. Great, yeah. which is still fine. I mean, I think I think if we were able to like, may, maybe if you know if we couldn't get a, a whole bunch of them to have comments back, maybe right. having a couple of them at a time, and then. I mean, do, do we have to have individual public hearings on each individual no. one or we could have, okay, great. No, you can have one so giant could, meeting. We could get a bunch of them together, you know, that maybe we could chunk That's out through true. the meetings and then um, and have one big public hearing on bylaw zoning changes in the right appropriate amount of time before spring meeting and get right. some done. And be done with it. And, yeah. and, and say, and, and the, the advantage there is we set a deadline if we get you know, we if only we, get three of them or four of them. Great. And that's what we're putting in. And that's what we're putting in for the public hearing. If we get eight of them also great. And we'll put them in there for the public hearing and we'll move on. Um, but we, we could we almost have it it every year. We always have this meeting and whatever makes it in, makes it on, you know, makes it to the town meeting. I mean, because it's exactly. not like we're going to run out of things. That's you right. Know? That's right. I don't know what exactly the timeline is there, but maybe, you know, the March or the April meeting, whichever right. one it needs to be in the timeline, like that's the meeting where we're, this public hearing is going to occur. And, okay. and is this, yeah. is this thing, is the address Woodland or Prospect? Woodland. Woodland, all right, good. All right. Okay. The, the minutes yeah, say that, Prospect. That threw, that threw me for a second. Right. Like, wait. I'm like, I know about the one over there on the corner with Pine, uh, Pinecroft. Actually, yeah. uh, yeah, it's on the Woodland side, I believe, right? Yeah, I'm telling you. yeah, yeah. Looking at that, I still don't know how these people are going to pull in their driveways, but I am sure that well, they will they, figure it out. And George, you will, you will get them well, to do the it, right thing. They, they put in a plan, and uh, I went over with the DPW. Uh, we looked over stormwater and everything with that, and um, they can do it. It's tight, but you know, be, on, hey. be honest with you, what he's putting in is a lot better than what he could put in. Fair <laughs> and enough. They can do that, fair. keeping it, keeping everything in general in the business zone. All except for that one little part the of the building that that that's in the single residence. It's, it's spills over. Okay. It's it's okay. It's, it's uh about I, it's probably maybe, I'd say two hundred square feet. Into that area, okay. maybe, a ten by so 20, twenty little section, 20 by 10. including yeah. the deck. You know, so it's it, it it's substantial. It's it's a it's a big chunk of active use, and I'm still not not happy with that decision that the courts made on that. But sure, you know, that's what happened. Well, that's yeah, what it's, happened. it's and here it's, we are. It's tough when you get vindicated by one court, and then yeah, yeah. And then, then the appeal comes through on, on the other one. And okay. I think that the last week you've decided not to not to appeal it. So, you know, we just have to deal with it now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, George. All right. Okay, Thank you, welcome. George. We really, yeah, we really appreciate that. And um, and yeah, so yeah, you got us some proposed language, and we'll review it next time. And I'll, let's I'll put just... something. I'll put something together, and then uh, we can. Uh, yeah, I have no problem and, and just keep it, it just keep it coming. Wording. Just, just keep it coming, George. You don't have to do it all at once. You know, okay. like as things. No, come I like up. it. I like it. I like to do one piece at a time and make sure it's yep. done right, rather than a bunch of things and having half yep. of them. Wrong. So. Yeah, we can have a you know, the, it, and it and it makes the meetings a little bit shorter because you know we only talk about that one sure. thing and then we move on, right? <laughs> all good for everybody. Sounds good. Ah, uh, thank you, George. All right. So have gonna, a good night. Thank you, you, George. Have a good one. Um, the ZBA informational petition on the special permit application for 181 West Boylston Street. Forgive me. Somebody bring me up to speed on this one. Sarah, it's Dave. Yep. It's the classic suites. It's that uh, triangle building, the A-shaped building in the front of the okay. Columbus suites. They want right. to put a car, they want to put a coffee shop in there. Right. So we have we have scheduled a, a public hearing for um, the 17th of um, of November. They'll be coming forward. They'll be coming to us for a uh, special permit. Okay. And I believe I believe that uh, Mel uh, that um, um, she sent out everything to you guys. Let me go back here. Toby sent it out. Yeah, Toby said should have sent everything out to you guys. Oh. I know. I see it. I just missed it. 
Um, I'm familiar with this great. also, so if and, you have any questions, I can answer them. Okay, and who's, I mean, you know, typically Vinny uh, prepares, or has prepared uh, letters in response, but, you know, Vinny was the clerk then. Right he, now who's I'm our, the clerk. Who's, who's our clerk? I'm the, I'm the clerk, so <laughs> we're probably not going to have that many letters. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so... I'm I, I'm going to apologize in advance that I missed this. Um, Does someone have crazy a plan? My household. Toby sent the plan out. Can we look at the plan? We'll make comments, and then uh, I guess yeah. I'll draft a letter. Or Mark can yeah, redeem here. himself and draft a letter. <laughs> it was. No, I don't you want to redeem yourself and draft a letter? Is there, is there meeting like tomorrow? This it needs to be to the ZBA by the tenth of November. Oh, no perfect. later. Tenth of November. Oh. Okay. Then I have our next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I think I think that your next meeting, okay. the one in November, is the tenth of November, right? Uh well, well that's right, but I have time to make a letter. That's okay. Mark, can you do it before the after Thanksgiving? And then you kind of move all your lovely faces here. I have to do it before Thanksgiving. No. <laughs> okay. How is this looking here? I can zoom it. There we go. So our meeting is on the ninth. Yeah. Okay. Second Wednesday is November 9th. All right. So what is the variance that they're asking for then? They're not asking for a variance. They're asking for a special permit. Oh, okay. to be allowed to do it so can you zoom in a little Who, who's yep a little more i'm looking at that entryway and i see oh. dunkin donuts all over again the drive through comes out yeah into oncoming I thought, traffic I, you know when they talked to us they kept talking about how you know they have this they have the light there but yeah i don't think they're using it but isn't the light is over here, right? Yes. Yep. Correct. And in, in, in front of uh, the mill, Sarah, there's all those seating in his smoker and everything. They're not going to drive through there and they're not going to move that, I heard. Right, 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 right. Right. So why not go but around can the they back? Go, they, yeah, I was going to say, can they go around the back? Like, can they come in this way and then, you know, go out that way to the light? They well, then the car, the window won't be on the side of the driver. Oh, right, right, right. The passenger right, will be right, getting right. all the food. <laughs> uh, they, I mean, do they have to have the, um, the drive up at, on that side of the building? Why can't it come yeah, up? It's already, the it's already set up for that. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, a drive through is already like set that. up? It's, well, yeah. the, it's the way that building is, right? You know, that's like you'd like Correct. drive in there under the, overhang to like you know go into howard Park johnson's <laughs> yeah that whole traffic is a nightmare that doesn't make a lot of sense there i mean you got what traffic it... going out like if the north is up on the plan so you've got 20 foot wide it says so that's a little bigger than one lane is that an in or an out or no lane how do how do people just go in and park or the people they're using the motel, are they driving in and driving out along that side? They need exactly a foot aisle. The, the, uh, if I can uh, speak, Vinny, just one second. The dotted lines that they're showing the in entrance and the exit uh, are separate from the uh, driveway that goes to the motel. On the uh, northern side of those dotted lines, I think there's a, I can, I think it's like a 20 or 20 foot wide uh driveway that goes oh. to the hotel so so you would actually have three part. yeah you'd have actually four uh entrances and exits in that one area yeah get out an entrance to the coffee shop and exit to get out of the coffee shop 
So, yeah, and, and you're saying, and they don't, and they don't want to get rid. Is this this bit here? Who's that? Right this, is, this is that's mine. That's mine. Because you're so you're right in the wrong history. building. Yeah. So, no, no, no. I don't. No, I know. I know. I'm trying to come up with a way where they come in at the light and go around this way to use the right side of the drive-through, and that then come back out property. this way. Those are actually separate properties. But they own they both of them. But they have the Excuse me, Mr. Gallo owns both properties. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So they can do it so, separate names. Yeah. That was all. That was just trying to come up with a way that could make it so they somehow like came in at the light and looped yes. around there and came back out at the light. <laughs> that would right? make total sense, Sarah. Yeah. Or, well, I mean, you know, if they didn't, so if this is like, you know, if they don't want to go in front here because this is where all the nice, uh, you know, outdoor seating the mill has. I mean, I guess you could like somehow <laughs> come in and go around and back out this way, you know, back around the back again. I don't know. Usually there's cars parked along the back. You'd have to go all the way to the back of the property. Way back here. Yep. And drive and out. People and people sometimes yeah. block. It, it's it's a nightmare the way they got to drop bad. it. Yeah, because they don't have parking spaces lined out there, right? Correct. People just park wherever they want, Vinny. I think yeah. there should be some, maybe that's a zoning issue on that property that should get addressed too. Yeah. But the other thing <laughs> I, I was looking at on this one is on, you look at the back on the right side of the drawing, that yeah. parking, end of existing pavement, beginning of gravel area. So how would these gravel parking spaces considered parking spaces? He shouldn't get... If it's just a gravel area, that's not a parking area. So he he's going to have more than 15 new parking spaces. So he's going to need a site plan review. He came to us saying he's not going to have more than 15 parking spaces changed. But right now, he's only got the number of spaces that are on that existing pavement. You don't get to count dirt areas as your parking lot. Correct. I, don't, I mean, George, you're the one that makes that call. But that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Well, this this particular drawing that I'm seeing now is a little bit different from the original one I saw, but uh, you're right, Vinny, you can't have parking on that dirt area. And how do you turn around at that dead end? There needs to be at least some kind of a, they got to knock off a couple of parking spaces on each side to have a turnaround, because if those are all filled, you're not going to back up with more people coming in. Mm -hmm. right. And these are all things the ZBA is going to have to deal with if they don't do site plan review. Well, I definitely don't recommend allowing this configuration to go through. Um, you know, maybe they could get creative. I, I mean, I, I want like I'd love to see that building get used. It's so cool. It's iconic. Yeah. Like it'd be awesome to see it get used for something and used as is, and not just knocked down. Um, but I do think that that is not a good idea right there. Um, because also, and isn't right over here is table 12 and all the, and that yeah. stuff is like right next to it. So there's still, there's a lot of, you With know, poor parking out, there too. I mean, parking it's in and out problem. traffic. I mean, hopefully we don't have the problem at finders anymore, but hopefully when a new company comes in there, we'll be able to make sure their parking lot is not a dirt parking lot. Again, that's undersized. But, right. I mean, I, ideally some kind of you know, real traffic pattern around here, all directing out to the light that we do have, which is safer than anything else. I mean, that's that's a great thing right there would be the best thing. All right, other comments on that? So what about, how are people gonna walk across from, I mean, people that are at the driving school are gonna wanna go to the coffee shop. How do they get there? They just go to Cumbies. Well, <laughs> I don't know what is Cumbies coffee as good as this nice Italian coffee place. Come on, yeah, crosswalk right there. <laughs> is there a, a pedestrian walkway right there? Yeah. That's a good one. At, at the light, right there is. That's a good one. <laughs> but I mean, those those are the things we need to have pedestrian safe pedestrian access, and I don't really see that. The parking is shown is right on the property line. There's no 10 foot setback that may be existing, I guess, but 
Um, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm not sure how this is all really going to work out. I just see it as being another DQ. And is that just a one way in where the, yeah, right where your little arrow Post is? Here. Come in there now from left of your arrow. It, someone parks, oh, move your arrow back up there at the yeah. 12. Yeah, yeah those parks parking here. spaces. They pull in and park there. Do they then have, is that a one way route to go all the way around? Or do they back out and then try to just go straight out to Route 12? up north and then back to route oh, 12. like try to get just cut off yeah and go that way and if yeah, there's I, people I, let's say there are people parked in that queuing line just yeah. like in dairy queen how do they back out when there's people parked sitting there yep you're stuck there right. too bad yeah that's pretty much it mark i i, I mean when i saw it going in I, I was thinking that it would be another one like uh Dunkin Donuts where you'd come you'd reverse you'd come in on the left side go up loop around in the driveway of the uh motel and come back out on the left it's sort of like you're you know you're you're reversing your rights and lefts yeah but then yeah. The traffic uh, they call yeah. what they call those conflicts yeah oh, conflict certainly. Waiting to happen. it's, it's exactly and it, the exactly what will happen is what's happening in honey donut uh oh, sorry Dunkin Donuts all the time where people are trying to get into the drive-in line on the left side when people are trying to leave there too, you know? Yeah, I mean, you could maybe make it so they could come out, you know, come in at the light and go this direction through here, but then they saw the exit point, which is, I mean, that's a little bit of a tough spot right there. It's awful. In I mean, general. they can't take a left. They're going to take a left. There's going to be people at the light, you know? Right. You know, back and I don't. I don't, I don't take a left there. So, you know, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, nobody's <laughs> going to take a left there. No, no, they're going to take a right and go into Walmart and turn back around at the light. Oh, no, that's right. Well, but the majority of traffic is going south on Route 12 in the morning when people are that's mostly right. getting coffee. I mean, this is a nice idea for evening coffee drinkers and you're just going to sit around and relax in the coffee shop. But if they're looking for drive-by traffic, um, are they gonna increase the traffic flow from this property? I don't know. Um, there's no traffic study. There's no traffic pattern. There's well, no it'll slow down problem. while the police are, or the tow trucks are cleaning up the accidents. Mm -hmm. yeah, but there's no, Cran there's no Cranston stamp Cranston's on real plan, close right? to there. Right, exactly, that's perfect. <laughs> Cranston said they, I mean, they can like walk. <laughs> right, but is there a professional stamp on this plan? Anyone taking any responsibility uh, or is this just a sketch that someone did? Hang on, let me. Uh... Find us out here and see what. Oh, there's a stick. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Trip. Yeah. Let me just move it in here. There we go. Ha ha. So, who is that stamp? Is that Mo? Wait. Uh, Minnie, where do you work? Hang on. Isn't that where you work? No. Okay. <laughs> HS and the T group. HS and T group. HS and T group, yep. But who's the, what's the name on that? Daniel? On this, Daniel, I can't quite see. I can't make that out. You can't zoom in anymore? There you go. But still, I can't. Daniel Tivna. Okay. Oh. <laughs> professional, <laughs> well, he's a professional You guys must know who that is, but I can't read that. Okay, so he's a professional land surveyor. What does he know about traffic? You have a land surveyor stamping a traffic layout plan. I recall yeah. the only thing I brought up with this was I want a good traffic layout because it's going to be the top. It'll be a nightmare. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. I think as is, uh, it okay. sounds like we're so all- So the letter I'm all, writing is I going to be, the letter that I'm writing has a adjectives Disgusting, disaster. What, what else? What are the other words? I, it says, while we uh, love the idea of using this building right. for this something, uh, a, the the is, proposed is, the proposed plan uh, does not look viable for traffic. Hmm. 
uh, the traffic that traffic the, um, will be gen yeah the traffic patterns generated by the use that they are that they are asking for. Yeah, we can we can draft something, but the big issues are that the traffic pattern is not safe. The pedestrian access is dangerous. Uh, there are conflicts with the queuing line for the mm -hmm. drive through. Oh. The traffic pattern to park for the uh, motel is conflicts with the. Uh, drive through. There's no calculation or, uh, yeah, there's no table I saw for the calculation of the number of parking spaces required for each of the uses on the property. There is a second page here that we're yeah. not looking at, but. Uh, here, let me... Let's see what else might be said there. This is just the it's a floor, floor, plan. Plan, floor plan of the actual building. Yeah. Anyway. We need to calculate the number of spaces needed. Oh, actually, what's that on the left? Uh, oh, yeah. like, eh, trash removal. It says parking spaces. It says total paved spaces, 72 spaces, total gravel spaces, 20 spaces. Total space is 92 spaces. So we don't uh, 25 gravel. restaurant, 47 hotel, 20 gravel. Yeah, the 20 the, gravel the requirement. When has gravel been acceptable as a real parking area? At fairs? <laughs> yeah, for overflow parking. Yeah. I'm yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But I think at what's your thought on that? Yeah. I, so, so forget the twenty. They've got twenty-five restaurant and forty-seven hotel. Yeah, but they don't. Do they do anything about saying. the square footage? Do they? Am I, do they talk about the square footage of the restaurant or how many tables oh, or whatever? So you know how many spaces they need. That, right. Yeah, they, that should be the calculation they have up there. When they brought when when I went to the site, they asked me to, uh, you know, would 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 I approve something like that? I said else? absolutely not. So they knew I, right from the beginning I was against this as far as traffic flow was concerned. I told them that they want they should go to uh, plan review and uh, yeah. the site plan review. And they I think they were more interested in seeing if they could get a special permit. Yeah. Go by the easier route. And Absolutely. I think that's why this was sent to them. That's why I think this is where it is right now. Yeah. Didn't they come to okay. us and tell us why they weren't coming to us? Yeah, they said they didn't require 15 parking spaces. Exactly. So there was no trigger. Right. right. They, that's the only one that they were looking at as far as the bylaw is concerned. But I told them it's a little bit more involved than that. And uh, yep. But they wanted to see if they could get a special permit. That was, I think, what their intention was to go the route that they're going. All right. Oh, yeah. Mark, you're going to compose a letter based on yeah. what we're saying here. Vinny, Vinny's going to read it over and help you. Yeah, I can, I can add it. Get it. I've got some other thoughts. Okay. Um, excellent. Excellent. All right. But do, does the board agree that we think that because he's got parking 20 spaces in gravel, he can't count gravel spaces until they're paved in line. So that's a change of more than 14 parking spaces. So it requires site plan review. Ooh. There you go. I'll put that in here. That was a good try. That was, that was a good try to <laughs> use the use that. Yeah. Use the gravel. The gravel. Yeah, that was a good try. Yep. I agree. Oh. All right. Well, but how many spaces do they need? That's the other thing we need. Well, we don't know, but they're proposing 20 on gravel, so that triggers site plan review. So get rid of the ones on the gravel, and then is that enough? Or they could put 15 or 14 in. That would be fine. I mean, I really want to get this... I remember this as a kid. We used to go and have the clam strips where the old mill is, and that was the the old Hojo's uh, hotel. It was a great spot. I'd love to have it come back, but not like this. Yeah. Nope not not with that not with that traffic pattern. There, that's going to be unfortunate for everybody involved, really, yeah. in the end. Except um, for Cranston's. <laughs> except for Cranston's. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Frank? I agree with uh, everything you're saying, Vinny, that that if that light was on the other side, then it would be mint. Or well, that Hojo's was over where the light is, it'd be mint. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's already a nightmare with 
the 12 in the mill. Right. Yeah. And you got yeah. people coming out of Cumbies the wrong way, which I can also be guilty true. of. Generally. Yes. Yeah, I've seen that. We sh That's actually uh, another one for you, George. I don't know how we changed that. We tried to get that teardrop shaped exit only or entrance only. Uh, but everybody is just kind of pulling out the way wherever they want coming out of Cumberland Farms onto Route 12 North. Oh, I, I haven't really looked into anything like that. I, yeah. I'm usually going by there so fast to get to inspections that I never really noticed that. Is that an issue? I, I have never noticed that. Cars going in I, and out the wrong direction? I've been cut off going south on 12 by people coming across to get into Cumberland Farms. Yeah, I think it's just not supposed to be an exit at all. Oh, okay. Well, but they're also coming in from their, when they're northbound on Route 12, you're not supposed to be able to take a left. Oh, they're Cumberland left Farms in? Either. Oh, all right. So they're not oh, supposed you to should, they that. should be making that the light. Yes. They should be yes. making yes. that the light and come yeah. around. Oh, I, gotcha. I see what you're saying. All right, all right, coming. All right, I see what you mean. All right, yeah. And, and God only knows what's going to happen uh, when they that building sells. You know, Oceani Welding. What's going to go there now? Oh, is it for sale? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. we can move on from this one. Okay. Yep. Awesome. All right. All right. Uh, we've got some invoices to pay. I do want to note. Uh, Melanie reports that Mr. Ali has not paid his bills, so he Correct. doesn't have the money um, to pay the I, invoice. We don't have the money to pay his invoices. Can we take out the bond? Just kidding. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. <laughs> that that 46000 is not going to go very far. <laughs> I emailed Mr. Ali, just so you know. I emailed him. I, I am yeah, certain I think that we he all did. Have. It's... Yeah. Yeah. It's not as easy as sending a letter and he's a responsible guy and just does it. It's he's got other oh. budgets and other limits that it's not high on his list. No, I know. Yeah. But he yeah. The, the other first one he paid right away when I first emailed him a couple months back. Oh, okay. No, we didn't have for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Doesn't> <laughs> you, email you, only got, you only got one time and then that was it. Um just say I'm the new guy and they're pressuring me to get more money out of you. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll try them again. Obviously, I'll do that. I just. Do we know how much you need to ask for? Well, I said you have a couple hundred outstanding guys. You might as well send a thousand, Mr. Ali, and I got crickets. Yeah. Do we have any other money like that we can pay BHB just to keep them going? Or do they not care? I don't know the answer to that question. I, I mean, don't know do they you, just... it's not big expensive costs for VHB. It's only a couple hundred dollars. So they're not getting upset about it. It's just, yeah, okay. It keeps happening. We need to get paid. Yep. And yeah. he's going to, like, I don't know, what will we put him in collections if he doesn't pay? Right. We'll close it on his road. I don't know. Maybe that 92 North Main business that he says is his. Uh, well, that's business. Where George is gone. He keeps Address. saying that's his business, but that shouldn't be his business. I know that. Yeah, he does. He he said that. I mean, that, that that's where he offered to have the meeting with the homeowners to sign the documents. Was his yeah. offices at ninety two North Main? Yeah, Raj. But next time you talk to uh, George, remind him that that's a residential district, and that was only to be used as a business for like a show showroom during construction of those condos. At least that's what I think I remember. Oh, we lost Dave office. too. Wow. Oh. We lost Dave. Must be oh, good. Cool. Did. No, it's that's because it's almost 848. So let us move it along. Uh meeting minutes from last time. Did everybody get a chance to look at them? This would be the September 14th. Yeah. Meeting minutes. I thought yeah. they looked okay. I'll I'll take a motion. A motion to uh accept I don't have it in front of me. The meeting minutes September 14th of September 14th. Yeah. Approve Second. the meeting Got minutes it. of September 14th. Second. All right. All those in favor will roll call, Frank. Favor, yes. Vinny? Yes. Raj? Yes. Mark? Yes. And I am a yes. Okay, that's great. Those are passed. Um, 
we will meet next November 9th at 7 p.m. for our next meeting date. And Zoom is okay, have. or do we want in person? I, I would like to continue Zoom, and I'll tell you why. Um, uh, I've had like multiple people in my office just, you know, up and have COVID and they're still working, which is great. Like they're still participating, but they cannot come into my office. And so it would be great if we could continue to have meetings. You know, I mean, obviously if somebody was really, really sick and they couldn't, you know, be part of it, that's fine. But like, otherwise, if you're only like kind of sick, you can still be part of the meeting if we do it on Zoom. Just turn your video off. Right. <laughs> Maybe, at least while you're coughing, right? I mean, you know. Uh, so if Zoom's okay, okay with every, I, I, I'd like to continue with Zoom unless it's um, a problem or if we would like to do something special to see each other in person. I I'm yet to see anybody. Anybody. I mean, yes, we can only have Zoom meetings. Well, I think if we have things to sign, it's kind of lovely when we're able to get together and just sign it right away at the meeting. Um, but mm. yep. I don't know. Yes, it we would don't be have nice anything right now. in person. No, we don't. Um, I don't foresee anything okay. coming in the future. So I, I'd, I'd like to stick with Zoom for now. Let's see how things go through the winter months. And um, Did, Didn't you say we had bills? There's only one person gonna go do bills. Yeah, we have invoices to pay. Uh, and we don't, it only requires one signature. So whoever gets there first can okay. sign. Um, and that person should also sign Melanie's timesheet. I'm, I'm certain that somebody's going to take care of those. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Frank, motion? Yes, motion. To, to adjourn. Excellent. All right, well, roll call that again, yeah. Frank. I got your what? second mark. <laughs> oh, Frank, say yes. Coming from the peanut gallery. Yes. 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 <laughs> Minnie. This is why yes. I need to be in person here. In, in, in a, I can't I get do it. This. I get it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Raj. Yes. Uh, Mark. Yes. And I'm a yes also. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate Thank it you. as always. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'll, I'll see you next month.